Hi BookTube, hi. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to another episode of What's Cheering Me Up Right Now. And I thought I would appropriately start with the thing that's cheering me up the most right now, which is little Harry. Harry is my um, mini schnauzer that we got um, a little over a week ago now, and he has been such a joy. <laughs> Actually, um, the first two things are what's cheering me up right now. So we we bought um, slash adopted Harry uh, really on a whim, and I didn't know much about him. And the more that I have been, you know, taking him out in public, and people have been seeing him, and we've been talking about him. Everybody's been talking about how smart a miniature schnauzer, schnauzer is. They are ratting dogs, and so they will keep um, your house uh, free of pests and little rodents. Um, very smart, very easy to train. And what I didn't know, because I've never had an, a, a dog as an adult, but little puppies love to chew. And so this, the second thing that's um, cheering me up right now is that for, well, let me back up. About for the whole uh, six, first six days of Harry's little life with us, he was chewing on anything and everything and his favorite chew toy was my hands. And inevitably that really hurt um, and I was like at some point I was like I can't I can't continue to let Harry chew on my hands oh like look he's licking my hands now which is just so sweet um, I was like I can't continue to let him chew on my hands it's just too it's it's too much um, so I was like oh yeah dogs like bones <laughs> So yesterday I went to the grocery store and I picked up a whole bunch of bones for him and that has been a game changer because he has stopped chewing, mostly stopped chewing on the things that we don't want him to chew on like the couch edges and our shoes and the kids toys um, and now he's mostly chewing on his bones and um, right before he falls asleep like this, he's like falling asleep right now, right before he curls up he kind of goes to this spur of wanting to just go a little bit crazy and chew on everything including my hands my clothes um he'll chew on the the pillows and so on and so forth but since we got the bone i've just been giving him a bone and letting him chew on that while he's on my lap and petting him and then he'll fall asleep just like this which is just absolutely adorable so harry's been giving me a lot of joy right now um, I'll probably get up and make some tea in just a moment, but before that I wanted to talk about the second thing that's really, really cheering me up right now, and that was that we went to our first family outing um, uh, to the movie theater yesterday. Uh, so my myself, I have an older son, Graham, who's five years old. I have a three-year-old, D who's um, just a, a big ball of energy, my husband and I, and we, as the four of us, we've never been to the movies. Pre-COVID, my youngest, D was just way, way, way too young to go and sit through a movie. And so my husband would go with my older son, Graham, and they would have like a little outing together. Um, but it's um, our area has really lifted a lot of restrictions, which I feel mixed about. But um, the movie theaters have reopened, and one of the things that they were playing was Hayao Miyazaki's Castle in the Sky. Actually, um, around the nation here in the United States, Hayao Miyazaki is playing um, it for a, a limited amount of time. So for October, they did Howl's Moving Castle, which we missed, and that is my favorite Hayao Miyazaki movie. It is the best, in my opinion, the best Hayao Miyazaki movie. I love that movie but we miss that movie, um, uh, that opportunity to see it. And so for November, my husband bought tickets for Castle in the Sky, and it's one of the movies that I don't think I've actually watched all the way through, sat down and watched. And for the longest time, I was really against James Vanderbeek playing the main male lead, whose name is pa Patsu, I think. Um, James Vanderby, he has a very tenor voice and it really used to irritate me when I would hear Patsy speak, who was being voiced by James Vanderby. Um, but I really got over that when I watched it. It was so immersive to see it in the movie theater. It was so wonderful to go. The movie theater was really, really quiet. Um, there was only about 15 people in the whole theater. 
and my family made up four of them. And so we were really spread out and had our own space. We bought popcorn and candy and the kids did so... Oh no, someone's yelling. One moment. Okay, so I know I was talking about the movie theater. We just did this yesterday. But it was so cool. Every my, my kids did great. Dee and Graham did amazing. Um, and what was really cool was to see a, a director or creator like Hayao Miyazaki, who I have been watching for the better part of 20 years, um, and to see his movies that, or to see this movie in the theater, which was really just, I mean, really, really a cool experience to see it on the big screen. Um, we actually own the movie, but yet we still bought tickets and saw this one anyways, just for the experience. It was just fantastic. Um, and the kids did great. They sat through and watched the whole thing. And, um, and I really, it was just, it was just a really wonderful, wonderful experience. And it was really, it really, really cheered me up. To, to do that and to do something as a family, which is fun. I can tell it's gonna be one of those videos where I do a ton of cuts, and so we're gonna just do this vlog style so it makes more sense. <laughs> if you are a Hayao Miyazaki fan, will you please tell me um, what your favorite Hayao Miyazaki movie is? Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, and you're interested in in Japanese animation with a lot of fantasy and beautiful storytelling and truly a, a master, Hayao Miyazaki is a masterful artist, um, one of a kind. I, I was reading some of his, his articles and, and um, interviews and he really believes in like this immersive, imaginative experience and that's what he, that's what he gives you. He's a lover of nature, aviation, and often has very introspective work, um, introspective questions that he's asking throughout his films. Um, and a lot of his films center around either a light love story, um, sometimes there's a little bit more heavy on the love theme, but typically it's a very light romantic theme or that of friendship. Um, but you see, you see him cycle around these th the same themes again: aviation, nature, friendship, love, and some sort of introspection, um, which I just love. I love. Okay, I'm gonna stop gushing about Hayao Miyazaki, um, and I will, I will um, cut to <laughs> me probably making some tea because I really need a cup of tea right now, and <laughs> and I'll talk about the next thing that's cheering me up. Okay, so I took a bit, a bit more of a break than I thought, you know, dogs, kids, unpredictability and all that stuff. But I do have tea and I decided not to show it just because um, I was busy. <laughs> so yeah, um, let's talk about people, people that I have been enjoying. Um, this is, as I always say, like this, this list isn't um, exclusive to them. Um, because I follow a bunch of people on booktube and actually if you have a booktube channel and um, just just let me know down let me know down below because I would love to follow you okay so if you have a booktube channel if you have a channel let me know and then um, you know so I can if I'm not following you I can follow you because yeah I um, I love to follow people okay well we're gonna talk about some folks the first of all I have to give a huge shout out to my um my my wolf hall reading group now, it's not mine but the the group that i was a part of for wolf hall um we had been meeting every saturday it was organized by jolene from bookworm adventure girl if you don't follow jolene um she is amazing and what are you doing with your life um basically because she is just the sweetest smartest um, very organized human being that loves dogs, that lives in Canada, and that focuses on a, amid a bunch of different type of literature, focuses on Canadian authors. Oh, one moment. And in her, in her focus of Canadian authors, um, Margaret Atwood has been her big focus for this year. And so she has been reading through every single thing that Margaret Atwood has ever written. And she is, she's almost done with this journey. Jolene is, is almost there. And so if you were curious about Atwood at all, um, she does these Mondays with Margaret and she has a whole series on them. And you can go through and actually look at like the books that, um, that Atwood has written and get a really thorough and beautiful review by Jolene because she's amazing. Um, so I wanted to talk about Jolene who organized the Wolf Hall reading group. I was invited by AJ Dunn and they have an incredible channel. Um, they do uh, 
uh, book reviews and there's a, this um, uh, this palpable snark to their channel that I just I am like so here for <laughs> um, it's so the opposite of me but in the best way possible and I just love them so I mean just oh their channel is so great um, and so they have been, they're, they're really into thrillers, but we have the same taste in coming of age stories. Um, and we're, we're very like closely aligned to that. And I think we were basically, AJ and I were the cheerleaders for the book Wolf Hall because we really loved it. And we kind of like pulled everyone with us with our love. Um, so AJ. Then the next person in our, in our group was Sandy from Miss Reads A Lot. Sandy needs no introduction from me. She is a wonderful booktuber. She um, runs a wonderful channel and she's all about the 1001 books you must read before you die, um, which uh, off, really gave me the inspiration to do the 1001 children's books you must read before you grow up. And so Sandy is is just fantastic. She's got this wonderful, warm and bright energy. She's not afraid to tell you if a book didn't work for her and why. And she's just so smart. Um, and and just, a, just a voracious reader, one that I wish that I read as much as she did and as fast as she did because she can just read them like that. Um, and then two other people who are commenters that um, and I think that we don't focus enough on commenters here. A lot of times you can't direct them to people's channels, um, which is, you know, such a shame because I would love these two women to have channels as well. But Deborah Johnson and Sonia Devaney, um, both of these women are just wonderful supporters of the BookTube community that help our BookTube channels run um, smoothly and, and with... Um, um, and then really keep us going because we're here a lot of times we're inspired by the comments and so these commenters aren't just playing a role of watching but they're there to interact and they have um, things to say and advice to give and opinions to share and that is always just so wonderful and they brought their own energy and their faces and their ideas to this wolf hall group that was just amazing Deborah also often showed her sweet puppy dogs and um, Sonia showed her wonderful birds because she is is all about um, you know bird sanctuary um, which is amazing so just the group was wonderful the channels are wonderful and I think that if you are interested in any of these people please go follow them I mean please they're just amazing so two other channels I want to talk about um, and again this list is not extensive I mean it's this list is so limited it's, it's almost painful <laughs> to, to talk about um, these two other people that I wanted to mention were um, Anne with a book and posts on Saturdays and she is currently in school and I admire that so much because when I was in graduate school and in under undergraduate school I that took over my life I couldn't do anything and so to be in school and to continue to post and to continue to continue to read for pleasure is pretty inc pretty remarkable in my book because again I was I just I really focused on school when I was focusing on school one moment okay but Anne with a book she loves many of the things that I don't read she reads um, horror stories and sort of likes that creepy um, creepy crawly uh, get under your skin kind of book um, but really I just love her energy you can just tell that she has a love for the booktube community um, and that she is thoughtful and works really hard to put out um, videos that are are well developed that are well thought through and many times I've thought to myself and I wish you posted more but I totally completely 100% understand why you don't because if I was in, when I was in graduate school I could not I could have not ran a book to channel at all because I was a mess in graduate school hello <laughs> okay the last person I want to mention is Alicia from Alicia Reads and Rambles. She's also in school. And I think, I, I just don't understand why she doesn't have, okay. I don't understand why she doesn't have quadruple the amount of subscribers that she currently has. Um, she has, at the last I checked, she has about 68 subscribers. And really, I think she should have quadruple that because she's smart. She's articulate, she's funny, and she's got this like no nonsense personality, and she knows what she's talking about, and has this this confidence to her that is so 
wonderful to see. I absolutely love that about her. Um, I just think that that's so cool. <laughs> I just think that that's so cool. And really, a lot of times when she posts, I just, I just love it. Like, I love watching her content because she, I mean, she does, she goes, hello, my friends. And I don't know, she just has this, this way about her that, that sucks me in and that keeps me watching. And um, she's just everything that I love in a booktuber. Um, she reads widely. Oftentimes she reads graphic novels and she loves fantasy. Um, and she just, she is just, she is Alicia and she doesn't apologize about it. And I love that. I just love that vibe. So um, if you don't know these people, if you don't, if you're not already following them, please go check out their channel. You will not be disappointed. They all have their own amazing energy, something to bring. And I, again, I'm here for it. I love it. I love every moment of it. Right? I love every moment. I love it. Before I do my quick outfit of the day, I'm going to talk about book talks with Miss Thomas. I found Book Talks with Miss Thomas from Bill Ruttenberg from the Ruttenberg Library, who has an amazing channel. Just a sweet, warm fellow that is just wonderful. I'll link him below. But Book Talks with Miss Thomas, she is Miss Mrs. Thomas rather. I, in the South, it's just Miss for everything, whether you're married or not. Um, and so Mrs. Thomas, she. It has this wonderful heart. Um, you can just tell she has the heart of a, of a teacher who loves her students. She has a heart of a reader who loves her books. And she is just the, a kind soul. I just am really loving her channel. And as, again, someone that I believe uh, you all would enjoy. Uh, so head over to her channel. Again, I think I have now linked seven people. I've given you enough to, to follow and look at and yeah, um, to enjoy. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my outfit of the day. So I have my earrings up top. I'm really not sure if this outfit even goes together, but I wanted to wear a dress. It's kind of cold out. Um, I'm, you know, this, you know, maybe I'll title this outfit uncertainty. This is my uncertain outfit. This is like, am I, am I an artist walking around in winter or are, am I just um, somebody who looks like she doesn't know how to dress herself? I'm not really sure. So earrings are the gold earrings that I wear all the time, these beautiful gold hoops. Um, I actually got a haircut a few days ago and it's very sticky uppy. Um, I would say that it's cheering me up except for now I feel like I have to learn how to restyle it because it's just a little bit shaped a little bit differently. I have this sweet sweater that has these um, rose, these um, flower emboss embossing or stitchings on it, which is really pretty. I've had this sweater for 15 years. <laughs> And it's still one of my favorites. Um, I have this, okay, <laughs> we had an emergency, so you know, I had to like take care of that. Okay, so I have this dress that has this gorgeous uh, brown, not brown, beige and blue and red print on it that has flowers, which I absolutely adore. I have stockings and then I have little oxfords on that are glittery. Actually, if I could, let me see. Shoo. Do you see that? They're glittery. They're glittery Oxfords. Okay, so let me back up and I'll show you. <laughs> I feel like the biggest nerd ever sometimes, but I don't really care. Okay, onward. Two really quick things before <laughs> before I go. One of which is um, one of which is the fact that I celebrated 12 years of marriage with my husband. Um, our anniversary was a couple of months ago, but we were dealing with some sickness and some um, babysitter. Like we couldn't book a babysitter for a little while, and so in November, two months late, we celebrated our 12th anniversary anniversary and 14 years of being together because we got married on our anniversary, our dating anniversary. Um, and so it was just really wonderful to go out to dinner. We went to this wonderful German restaurant. Um, we were able to just talk and enjoy one another. And, you know, like, I am just so thankful to be with somebody who um, 
is is just amazing. Um, I know I joke that I was like, is Cromwell a villain? Well, good thing I love, I love Cromwell and Wolf Hall and I adore my husband. He's amazing and um, continues to be one of my heroes in life. Um, I just really admire and love him. Okay, so I'm gonna stop gushing about my sweet husband. Um, and, and then the final thing is that on Thursday, this Thursday, I'm gonna share a poem, a poem from a poet that I adore, a female poet. Um, I actually, she's a living poet, and I actually got her permission to read the poem. And I, <clears throat> I just hope that you all come back Thursday for that poem. It's really special and it really meant a lot to me to reach out to her and ask for her permission. And then for her to send me a very sweet email back and saying yes, that I, I, I could share it on my channel. So come back for Poetry Thursday. I'm just so, so excited about that. And yeah, that is it. Um, I hope you all are just doing well. Uh, please let me know what's cheering you up right now um, because you know, just spread the cheer, spread it all. <laughs> and I'm on a swivel chair, which I can't help but just move around when I do that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I need to stop. Things are getting into the goofball stage. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Um, check out the people below, come back for Poetry Thursday, tell me what you, is cheering you up right now, I would love to know. Continue to spread the cheer. Um, if you are a, a booktube creator on here, or if you are watching my video and you make videos, I would love to see your what's cheering me up right now. And then you can let me know that you did one, and then I will come and watch it, and love it, likely. Uh, and yeah, that's it. So I hope you all have the most wonderful, wonderful day, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye guys. Triangle head. Triangle head. Okay. Oh, please god hat head. What? A please god head. A rectangle head? Oh, please god head. Pentagon head? Yeah. Okay. They're gorgeous. It's gorgeous, my love. Ah! <laughs> you all. Really small and quick things, um, both of which are cheering me up. Oh!